I'm Connie Moser, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Nights at the Round Table. Tonight, my guests are Catherine Gotthardt, Catherine, and Debbie Alexander. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. They're both from Rainbow Therapeutic Writing Center, and um, they're going to tell us a little bit about, well, they're going to tell us a whole lot about some of the programs and, um, and facility. So you, we can just start. Would you like to start first? Actually, I think the beginning is actually with the history, so if you want to start talking a little okay. bit about sure, the history. Okay, sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, Rainbow Center was founded in 1984, so we've been operating in Prince William County for a long time. Um, four years ago, Prince William County government gave us a 30-year license agreement and about 45 acres in Haymarket next to Silver Lake Park. Uh, we moved on to property and we built an outdoor ring, an indoor riding arena, a caretaker's house, various paddocks. Um, it's really incredible that Prince William County gave us this property because of that we're able to serve clients year round and that's really essential because mm -hmm. one of the things that's important to remember is it's not pony rides that we're doing, we're providing therapy mm -hmm. and having that consistent year round therapy is really important to the clients. And then having the indoor arena is also essential because we don't have to close down if it's raining. We do for thunder and lightning. We can operate all year. So uh, we operate 43 weeks out of the year. Wow. So where are you located? Uh, we're right in front of Silver Lake Park. It's 5605 um, Antioch Road. Um, near LaGrange Winery and uh, oh, Hans uh -huh. Snyder. Okay. So uh -huh. I always tell families, you know, come out for a riding lesson, go visit La LaGrange. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a beautiful area. And so your your mission is to serve um, handicapped people of any, any uh, I don't want to say persuasion, what am I looking for? Any disability, whether they be um, physically handicapped or mentally handicapped or we serve children, teens, and adults. Our youngest uh, rider is four. We can't serve anyone younger than four because their necks aren't strong enough to be um, on a horse mm -hmm. with all the movement. Currently, our oldest rider is 55. Uh, we provide um, services for people with physical handicaps, social, emotional, educational. We have a robust Wounded Warriors program. We serve at-risk youth from Joe Gibbs Youth for Tomorrow. Uh -huh. Um, and we also serve high school students who are on the autism spectrum, and that's funded by Potomac Health Foundation. And Catherine is doing all of our outreach, so she's a great person to delve into the uh, details of our program. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit? or I'd love to because okay. I'm really excited about uh -huh. Rainbow. Google Plus. And she's, oh, yeah. I, over and over, I keep saying, oh, this is great. This is a great job. I'm so excited. I and love you are. It. It's, it's just it's so positive. Um, and one of the things that I'm just really excited about is that the programs have expanded so that they're able to serve people with um, like learning disabilities and psychological disorders, ADHD, um, and then do other address other issues like in anxiety, um, stress, um, kids who are going through tough transitions, mm -hmm. um, anyone who's going through a tough transition, you know, because those actually bring on different challenges. And it, you know, people look at disabilities and. Um, it's very easy to look at the physical disabilities because they're obvious, but it's the invisible disabilities sure. that are sometimes more difficult. Um, and I just said to someone this morning when I was on a tour over there that with the kids, it's not like you can just take a kid with a disability and say, here, you know, go join a little league team. Mm -hmm. So um, you were going to tell me a little bit about grooming therapy. What? Um, that's obviously not for the horse, it's for the individual. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's a mutual relationship, actually. Uh -huh. I mean, the horse loves it. Sure. Um, but it, uh, it covers um, all the way from just like cutting brushing and, and smoothing, and the more advanced students actually, you know, get to, to work with the hooves, cleaning out the hooves. And so, you know, people think, oh, I'm just brushing a horse or I'm just petting a horse, and it's not like that at all. I mean, there uh -huh. is um, a process to it, and it, it's a learned skill. Um, where to touch the horse, how to touch the horse. So it's the whole p learning the process has uh, many different functions. So for example, for someone with a learning disability, um, it's following instructions. Also for ADHD, it's following instructions. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very careful sure. when, I mean, not only riding, but grooming. Um, and for any kind of anxiety, it is like very stress relieving. Mm -hmm. to you know take the brushes and be smoothing them over the fur and 
and you're looking at these beautiful animals with their long eyelashes and they're just kind of looking at you like that feels so good thank you <laughs> <laughs> we have dust all over us from riding around all the time so it's just it's very rewarding and um you connect with the horse on a different level um i think that you know the riders connect on a way different level than they can a lot of times with humans mm -hmm. i mean sometimes you know you'll get riders who can't connect with humans at all mm -hmm. because they've but been they through trauma with animals. or animals. Right. Yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. it's an amazing relationship. Mm -hmm. Or kids with autism. Yes. We have a big program uh, funded by Potomac Health Foundation called the Maine Experience. And kids come out from Forest Park and Hilton High School. That's M A N E, right? Yes. Yeah. M A N E, <laughs> like a horse's mane. Uh -huh, um, okay. And uh, it's just been amazing. Uh, we're in our, s we just finished our second year of operation. And kids who didn't speak before were tactically defensive. Um, everyone makes um, breakthroughs. We track them against something called the Gilliam or Gar scale, which is a, an educational metric. Mm -hmm. We started out uh, hoping to achieve a 20% improvement, but we've achieved 100% with every single client. That is amazing. It's, it's we really didn't know what we were embarking on, um, and we're really excited with the results, and we hope to continue to grow it and serve even more kids. So what other programs do you do? That, that I know there are many. Yeah, um, and I think there's a little bit of an overlap, but for um, the summer, they're doing three sessions of camps that run all the way through August 2nd. And um, those are for groups, and they uh, serve kids who have a wide range of disabilities, and siblings um, with or without disabilities are welcome. So oh, that's, that's really so a nice. plus. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Because um, I remember when my older daughter was riding, my younger daughter wasn't. She, you could see the drool factor <laughs> just kind of coming down. Well, and I imagine it's if you you know um, a lot of a lot of times handicapped children, uh, it is their siblings they depend on. That it's the sibling that makes the foray into the world, and they kind of are protective or an entree sort of a feeling. So I'm sure that helps eliminate because I would think that there's a lot of fear involved. In, I mean, the horse is a big animal, mm -hmm. and I would, I, I mean, you know, I don't really have, I, I rode when I was a kid. I don't remember being afraid, but I, surely anyone that's ever been around a big horse must think, <laughs> Yeah, there's a big mix. Mm -hmm. I mean, some kids come out and they can't wait to get to the horse, uh -huh. and some, not just kids, some adults are petrified. Oh and, really? Uh -huh. uh, with some people we, we have to take a longer time to introduce them to the horse. We also have a really cool piece of equipment. It's called an oh, equisizer. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about this. Yeah, yeah, she wrote really it. I just want you to know I witnessed this. So. Oh, yeah, I, I will ride it anytime. <laughs> I love it. It's a mechanical horse. All the elementary school raised the money to buy it for us and it serves a myriad of purposes. One, we can put someone on it who's too fragile to be put on a horse and they can get the same exercise because that replicates uh -huh. the movement of the horse or they can get used to it. When I first joined Rainbow, there were two brothers in the program. They're a year apart, Josh and David, and one of them just couldn't wait to get on the horse. The other was afraid of everything, not mm -hmm. just the horse, flies, dirt, you name it. Oh. He had been coming with his brother every Saturday for a full year and hadn't sat on the back of a wow. horse. And it may have been my third or fourth week there when they put him on the saddle for the first time. And I'll never forget his dad just locked eyes with his son. And he had this look on his face that was so reassuring. And he just never dropped his gaze. And when his son sat on the horse and reached down and was stroking his neck, there wasn't a dry eye on the farm. Oh, it was amazing. Sweet. And now this boy is like, I want a canter, I want a gallop. And we're like, no, we don't do that here. <laughs> but he's Mr. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> so how do you, do you, get, are, are most of your clients, are they referred to you by some other, by a government agency or by a health agency? Or how do you get, how do people get to you? How do they get in your program? That's a big mix. You're doing yeah, all the outreach. So yeah. we, it's definitely a mix. I mean, I just met with a lady this morning that deals, she's with an agency and she works with kids who are in the foster system and so they've got a lot of um, psychological issues going on there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anxiety, um, detachment, um, PTSD. So 
you know, if she's going to set something up, it's going to be through her agency. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's just individual folks that are coming in. I mean, that's how I got to it. You know, it's like, oh, Rainbow, what is this? I just happened to e hear about it. It was kind of random. Um, so that's how, in fact, it might have even been Facebook. It was Facebook. <laughs> it was Facebook. I Facebook. <laughs> so that's how I heard it. great equalizer. And then there's the, the, the camps, which, you know, some of the um, kids got flyers in their backpacks to um, bring home. Uh -huh. And they'll be getting them for some, uh, through summer school also so that they can take a look at the camps, the camp offerings. Um, and then a lot of it that I've been doing is, you know, information distribution and going to the, to go into the clubs and talking about them and going to events and handing out flyers and saying, hey, this is what Rainbow is about. And it is amazing, first of all, the number of people who know what Rainbow is already. Mm -hmm. So that is just very affirming. Um, and everyone who talks about it is really excited about it. And you just see like a big smile, that's a great program. Um, and then it's also amazing to me how many kids and adults have disabilities because we don't see them, but there's such a wide range of disabilities that um, it, it's almost like you can't not know someone with a disability, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's why I think, again, it's so neat that Rainbow is serving that, that range, you know, all the way from the visible to the invisible disabilities. How, how many um, how many people do you service in a year? Do you have a rough idea? Well, we know exactly. Last year we served 179 clients. The majority of our clients come from Prince William County. Um, we do have riders from Fauquier County, Loudoun County, uh, Fairfax County. Um, uh, and um, I can give you a pretty rough breakdown. Walter Reed, last year I, I'd say we served between about 17 soldiers. Um, we also offer that service completely free of charge. So if there's a veteran mm -hmm. that's watching this show or someone knows a veteran who could benefit from our program, all they have to do is make an appointment and we will serve them either while the wounded warriors are coming from Walter Reed or privately. We've had two people from the community come um, and it's completely free of charge. Uh, then the um, Potomac Health Foundation program, there are 63 kids who came from Forest Park and 21 who came from Hilton um, uh, Youth for Tomorrow. Uh, each session there are six to seven kids that come um, from that program uh, and we've done over the past three years two sessions, uh, three sessions, uh, two with boys and one with girls um, and we're, we're in our fourth six week session right now with that group and then the rest are private. Can I just tell you I'm in awe that you can remember all that? <laughs> I'm so glad she's here. Today. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, that was really, that was amazing. I'd be holding up a stat she was saying. <laughs> so how does your, is your funding mostly grant money or is it um, private donations or some combination it's thereof? It's a huge mix. Um, last year our budget was around 380000 um, It's a little over four hundred this year. We get about 32000 from Prince William County government as a uh, community partner. Mm -hmm. um, we have our grant from Potomac Health Foundation, and then all the other money comes from private fundraising. I, I want to stop you just there for a second because I want people to understand what that means. As a community partner, you have to apply to Prince William County, and then there's a process that you go through. And essentially what you're doing is proving that you can provide a service less expensively than Prince William County could provide it for someone. Is that that's exactly that it in a nutshell? It, correct. Yeah, I just want to be sure I have that straight. And it's a really important, I mean, all of the community partners provide a safety net for um, people in the community. And mm -hmm. we have, um, we just don't have that many services for people with disabilities. In Prince William County and the other counties also, you know, we're, Northern Virginia is one of the wealthiest communities in the country. We have ball fields, we have swimming pools, we right. have golf, um, basketball, soccer, and there aren't that many places for folks with disabilities to go and have recreation. We also are building our center to expand our functionality so that parents can leave their children with us for a longer period of time. We'd like to offer four to six hours of programming so their parents can get respite. Mm -hmm. Just think about it, a lot of the people in our program um, 
they're in their 20s or 30s, but require the same level of care that a newborn infant right. does. Mm -hmm. So their parents need a break. Um, we're also offering our space for meetings. Um, uh, I've just joined a board of uh, ARC of North Central Virginia and have offered our space uh, That's for their a good meetings. That's good companionship. An amazing yeah. partnership. Um, there's another group called Special Needs of Piedmont, um, and they need places to meet, so uh -huh. we've offered our space. And that's something that is important to us, that we offer our facility to others um, so that we can expand our services. We also um, have Prince William County Mounted Police use our indoor riding oh. arena completely free of charge so uh -huh. that they can practice. Um, they've got to prepare their horses for you know, bomb scares, parades, different right. things, and so they need a private, quiet place for training. And it's cool, they always come right after the main experience, and they come a little early so they can tell the high school kids about their jobs. And we have several students now who dream of becoming a mounted policeman oh, in Prince William County. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's it's really, really nice. Cool. I had a, a kind of a thought while you were talking. Do you have ever, like elderly, like do you have a maybe ride in a sulky or something like that? You know what I was thinking about was Alzheimer's patients have so many, um, unset you know, so many things unsettle them. They're, they're easily agitated. And I was just thinking how calming and peaceful that might be if you had such a service. Have you ever thought about that or? Well, carriage driving is something that we've thought about. Mm -hmm. We have a carriage. The um, certification for carriage driving is very Yes, complex. carriage, not a sulky. We don't want to yeah. race them, do we? <laughs> no. Ugh. We have a beautiful... <laughs> Take me to the farm. <laughs> <laughs> we have a beautiful carriage that's Amish built, um, and it's in our strategic plan, but it's just not something that we're ready to offer yet. Uh -huh. I have to have my instructor certified and trained. Um, so maybe down the road, but definitely um, adults with Alzheimer's, um, MS, battling mm -hmm. cancer, any kind of emotional issue, we can serve them now, mm -hmm. um, and we'd okay. love to have them in our program. All right. Um, uh, I've, so is there something else? If I've, have we covered pretty much everything you were, would like to, or is because you know I didn't follow a script at all, that would be too logical. So is there <laughs> anything that you would like to slip in here before we wind up? Or um, I think we didn't talk about how there is now a um, licensed therapist who are working with the emotionally disabled. Yes, we've just hired Catherine Mason, who's a clinically licensed social worker. So um, uh, we're able to offer equine-assisted psychotherapy. So that's a, a new service um, for Rainbow. And um, we're really excited to have Catherine join our team. Rainbow um, belongs to two umbrella organizations. One is called the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemen, mm -hmm. and that covers therapeutic riding and the groundwork. And then there's another group, an umbrella organization called AGALA, which is Equine Assisted Growth and Learning. And we've been providing growth and learning classes. Um, two of our instructors are certified equine specialists. And now we've added a mental health specialist to the mix to... If the public wanted to come for a tour, is that, can you do that? Can you accommodate them? I'll give them a tour. <laughs> yeah. It is appointment only. We're uh -huh. very careful about um, protecting the privacy of sure. our clients. But all they have to do is call the office or call Catherine uh -huh. um, or myself. We love giving tours. Um, and there is one other thing that um, we might mention. Um, in September, mm -hmm. we are hosting our third annual um, Peter Mayer and Scott Kirby concert. Along with raising money for program, we're also raising money for our capital campaign. Mm -hmm. And the Scott Kirby concert is our one big capital campaign event. Um, this year, it's going to be at the Tally Ho Theater in Leesburg. Um, it's always a sellout concert, and we're really excited. So September 21st, you could... So we talked about just about everything, but I did want to touch on um, the camp programs. Would you like to tell me just a little bit about that? We'd love to. We have three really neat camps, Equipoise, Equipower, and Equifocus. Equipoise is for um, uh, uh, people who are having difficulty coping. Um, it could be a move, new school, uh, families going through a divorce, any kind of emotional um, 
experience that's got the child um, out of balance. Equipower is teaching girls how to be empowered by helping others, jumping oh, off love the that. mean girl bandwagon, um, also teaching girls how to deal with bullying. Um, it's so rampant in the schools. Yes. Um, and then Equifocus is for kids with ADHD. Um, it's a really cool program. I could use it myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure we all belong there. <laughs> but they're really neat camps. Uh, we started them. Last year was our first year, and they were very successful. Um, and they're open to middle school girls and high school girls. Um, now, when you say camp, I think, I'm thinking Girl Scouts. I'm thinking, you know, we, we all go camp out. It, it's not that it's kind of. It's a day camp. Here we right. go. They're week-long sessions. Um, and uh, so it's Monday through Friday. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining me today. It was thank a you. enlightening thank experience. It was good to see you both. And I thank want to you. thank you uh, viewers for watching tonight. And I hope you'll join us next week when our guest will be Denny Daughtery from the, uh, he's our newly elected president for Committee of 100. And thanks again to our producer, Bill Golden, for providing this space. See you soon.